Outer Wilds and Kerbal Space Program are two very different games. The former is a narrative-driven exploration game, while the latter is a realistic spaceflight and rocket-building simulator. But of course, they both share one obvious commonality. They're in space. Both games are set in scaled-down solar systems compared to real life. That said, the sizes of the planets in Kerbal are scaled down by a factor of 10 from real life. The Earth analog in that game, Kerbin, is one-tenth the size of the real Earth. Outer Wilds, on the other hand, is more like a factor of 100,000, with its Earth analog, Timber Hearth, being only 500 meters in diameter. To get a sense of this difference in scale, let's look at the smallest celestial body in KSP, Gilly. This is the captured asteroid moon of Eve, the game's purple Venus analog, and it is, according to the KSP wiki and this one forum post, about 19 kilometers in radius at its highest point. I threw together a quick mod to load it into Outer Wilds at its natural scale, placing it where the sun normally is, and wow it is big. It encompasses the orbits of almost every planet in the Outer Wilds except for Dark Bramble here and the Interloper which is now flying into its surface. Okay, so KSP is on a much larger scale than Outer Wilds, that part is abundantly clear. But still, if we're talking about simulating a solar system with objects kilometers or millions of kilometers apart, we're going to start seeing some common problems that the devs had to overcome to make each of these games. In this video, I'm going to highlight a few of these issues and how each game went about dealing with them. On the KSP side, I learned most of this from a 2013 talk the devs gave, plus some mild messing around with the Unity Explorer mod. And for the Outer Wilds side, I've made a number of mods myself, so I'm pretty familiar already with how that game works. I've split this into two parts. The first part is about precision, sort of dealing with game engine limitations. And the second part is about how they choose to simulate the laws of physics in each game. Okay, cool. Part 1. Dealing with precision. KSP and Outer Wilds are both made in the Unity game engine, which stores positions using single precision floats. Without getting into too much detail, a float can store a really big number with a decimal point, but you lose precision as the number gets larger and larger. That means you start running into rounding errors that cause the numbers to be slightly, or not so slightly, off from what you expect them to be. In the KSP talk, they specifically say this started to noticeably affect their game when the ship was 20 kilometers away from the center of the game scene. That would make for a really bad user experience when you're flying millions of kilometers away to visit another planet. Even in Outer Wilds, 20 kilometers barely covers the entire solar system. So how did they fix this? Floating origins is how. <laughs> so how this works is that the center of the scene is readjusted to always be close to the player. This means that calculations occurring near the player use relatively small floats and are therefore done with high precision. They apply this not only to the position, but to the velocity as well. Instead of applying velocity to the player, they can instead apply the opposite velocity to everything else. So technically, I am not flying towards Giant's Deep here in Outer Wilds. Giant's Deep is actually flying towards me. The same is true for KSP, although I think they have some slightly wider margins for when they actually start to move the center of the scene or start applying velocity to other things than the player. For Outer Wilds, this is the source of a fun fact that people like to share about the game, which is that when you jump, you aren't pushing yourself away from the planet, but rather pushing the planet away from yourself. Okay, so Floating Origin solves floating point error when the player is moving far distances, but what about dealing with the error on the distant objects themselves? In Outer Wilds, to solve this, they, they don't solve it. You can see this for yourself if you fly far, far away from the sun. All the planets start jittering and falling off their orbits. Now, Outer Wilds can afford to do this because it is set in a 22-minute time loop. The jitter can never get too bad considering you're just going to reset the game soon anyway. KSP, on the other hand, does not have that luxury. You can have satellites all over the solar system, you can speed up and slow down time, and keep the same save file around for years and years, and if the movement of planets was accumulating errors that entire time, you would get a pretty messed up game. Part of their solution to this, and we'll talk about the other part later, is that they store positions as double precision floats. Positions as precision... Positions as double precision floats, which are 
Not exactly twice as precise as floats, I don't understand the specifics of how much more precise they are, but let's just say they are substantially more precise, and that this largely fixes the issue. That handles the positioning of objects. What about the rendering? Now with 3D cameras in Unity, and presumably every other game engine, you have a trade-off between how far you can see and the quality of what you see. Again, because of how precision is dealt with in the code. Because of this, both KSP and Outer Wilds need to employ some tricks in order to render distant planets while still rendering the stuff around you at high quality. I already have a video about how Outer Wilds does this, which you should go watch maybe, but the short version is the camera only renders stuff that is at most about 40 kilometers away, and once a planet is approaching that distance, it gets swapped for a mini copy that then renders something like 30 kilometers away with forced perspective positioning to make it seem like it's actually the right distance away. Now KSP does this differently. They have the low detail copies of planets off in the distance, and they employ two cameras when rendering the game scene. A near camera that sees your ship and the local terrain, and then a far camera that sees these distant replicas of planets. And then I think there's like a third camera that sees inside your ship, and I think like a fourth camera for the UI, the, the, there might even be a fifth camera for like atmospheric effects, I don't know, they got a lot of cameras. Point being, far camera renders behind the near camera, and gives you a pretty seamless view of the world without losing quality. Outer Wilds seems to also use this far camera approach, but only for the photos taken using your scout launcher. I'm not sure why they didn't just use it everywhere then, but I don't know, they, they, they got this game to run on the Switch, so who am I to question their, their, their judgment? Part 2, dealing with physics. This is where I'd say the games diverge the most. Outer Wilds uses integration-based physics, and KSP uses a combination of deterministic physics and integration-based. What does that mean? Integration-based physics means that each physics frame, the state of all physics objects, are updated based on the physics state of the previous frame, according to your standard kinematic equations. In Outer Wilds, this applies to everything. The planets, the player, the ship, this potted plant. This is also why floating point error is able to accumulate over time, because the error on the previous state gets compounded with the error on the next state, and so on. KSP only uses integration-based physics for the ship you are actively flying, when it is being affected by drag, or when the rocket engines are firing, when you're spinning it around. Basically, when you switch between physics time warp and regular time warp, that's you switching from integration-based to deterministic physics. Deterministic physics means that the planets are on rails. Their positions are simple functions of time as they move along whatever ellipse defines their orbit. In both KSP and Outer Wilds, planets and moons are only affected gravitationally by what they orbit, which results in a two-body problem that is directly solvable. As a bonus for KSP, this means they don't have to even save the positions of the planets. Just save the time and the orbital parameters, and you can instantly recover the positions and velocities from those values. This is another way, besides the double precision floats, that they get around dealing with accumulation of errors over time. So now, why doesn't Outer Wilds use deterministic physics? I think that devs have spoken about this in interviews or, or podcasts or whatever, and it seems to be that the answer is, uh, well, because it's kind of cool to be able to say that you're actively doing orbital calculations in real time, rather than just moving along the equation for a circle. Now, is that a good reason? Uh, yes, yes, that is a good reason. So, okay, both games only do two-body physics on planets. What about on the player and their ship? In KSP, they use a sphere of influence system where only the dominant gravitational body near you exerts gravity on you. So when you're orbiting Kerbin, your orbit isn't being perturbed by gravity from, say, the Mun or Minmus. In Outer Wilds, however, the player is affected by everything within a certain distance. This is demonstrated by an exhibit in the museum, where these metal balls roll around based on the position of the Adel Rock, and you even experience less gravity standing on the surface of Timber Hearth depending on what moons and planets are overhead. In more dramatic instances, you can get pulled up off the ground by a passing planet. Okay, so that's about it. Just a couple things I thought were interesting to compare and contrast between two of my favorite games. Both of them are, of course, fundamentally different experiences, leading them to prioritize which issues they need to solve over other ones. 
This was a good exercise for myself as well because I'm currently making my own space simulation game and from doing this research I realized I really needed to implement a floating origin. Now this was probably a one-off video. I have maybe one other KSP video idea that I might make but let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for more. Okay bye. Thank <laughs> you.